Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, since the last video I made about the Maker Select V2 did so well compared to my other videos, um, I figured I should probably make another one. Today I'm going to be talking about which mods I've done to my printer, some of the benefits and downfalls of each of those mods, and which mods I think are worth spending your time and or money on. Uh, this isn't an all-inclusive list of possible mods for this printer, and there are most likely better versions of some of these mods out there. So feel free to leave comments with your opinions if you disagree with me on anything, or if you have any better suggestions. Also, I'll try to include a link to any printable mods that I've used in case you're interested in trying them out. The first mod I would suggest, and the first mod any forum on this printer suggests, is adding a MOSFET board for your hotbed. The benefits should be obvious if you've already read up on this printer, but basically it's a preventative measure to make sure your printer doesn't catch fire. There aren't any downfalls that I'm aware of, but I have somewhat of a horror story where my first MOSFET board melted through the 3D printed mount when I was testing it out. So if slash when you do this mod, I highly recommend testing it with the control box still open to make sure the MOSFET works the way it's supposed to and doesn't get too hot. The very first mod I printed for my printer was a zip tie anchor to stop the hotbed wires from rubbing on the back of the frame. As you can see, the zip tie holds the wires in place and they coil forward like a spring, so they're not rubbing on anything or bending excessively. This should prevent damaging the wires any faster than necessary. The second mod I added to my printer was the Z-axis braces. This is also a very popular mod and for good reason. The metal frame and the Z-axis wobbles noticeably on this printer out of the box. And if your X-axis or Y-axis start moving rapidly as most prints tend to do, that can cause your Z-axis to wobble. There are several things that can cause Z-axis wobble, but this mod is probably the best first step in trying to stop it on this printer. The next mod that I did to my printer was replacing the Y carriage with a 3mm aluminum aftermarket carriage. From what I've seen and heard, this is a needed upgrade for probably 40-50% to of these printers. I have seen some amazing prints come off of this printer with the original Y carriage, so I can't fairly say it's a necessity in all cases, but it definitely was on my printer. My original Y carriage was bent out of the box, and as soon as the springs started pressing down on it, it was pretty much impossible to level all four corners at the same time. If you're running into this problem, or if your Y carriage is obviously warped, I would definitely recommend replacing it. After that was a glass build plate. For my printer, this became a necessity after a while. If you look at the bed on your printer, it's a 3mm thick piece of aluminum with heat traces on one side. Even if it starts out perfectly flat, odds are good it's going to warp eventually, especially if you use high temperatures on your bed. Glass is less likely to warp around the 60 to 100 degrees Celsius range than aluminum is, so as long as you have a sturdy piece of glass in your bed, you're more likely to keep a stable flat surface to print on. This may not be a necessity for you, but odds are good it will make your life easier at some point. You may have noticed that my glass plate is bigger than most of the glass you'll see on other Maker Select printers, and there's a bit of a haphazard reason for that. I ordered some countersink M3 screws from Amazon and drilled out recesses in the top of my hotbed. So now the screws are level with the top of the bed and the glass can go all the way to the edge. Do I recommend this for everybody? No, definitely not. This was a bit of a crazy thing to do, I was very careful about it, but I was also prepared to buy a new hotbed if I did screw it up. Anyway, it's nice, but not a necessity, and definitely not recommended. The next part is something I designed myself in Onshape, 3D printed XNs. I don't know if I would recommend this for everybody, but it did give a little bit of a boost in quality for my printer. Printing these XNs let me use standard LMAUU bearings, and they're tight enough on the smooth rods to prevent most of the wobbling. Another mod that I did on my printer was I installed a genuine E3D V6 hot end. $76 on Amazon and well worth every penny. Or was it? I would say installing and maintaining this hot end has probably been the biggest headache of any mod that I've installed on this printer. I do think it's a great hot end as it works beautifully on my Prusa i3 Mark II. But since there is no stock configuration for any slicers that makes both the Maker Select printer happy and the E3D V6 happy at the same time, I feel like I've struggled more with dialing in good print settings since this upgrade. I'm pretty sure I can make a whole video on my experience with the E3D V6, so I'll probably just wait and do that later. 
After a while, with the installation of the MOSFET board, I noticed my control box feeling a little bit warm during longer prints. Not hot, but warm enough to make me consider adding a cooling fan. So I installed this control box extension that allows for a 120mm fan to be added to the back. The fan hooks up easy enough to the same cable that was running the small fan that came standard, but it blows enough air through the control box to keep everything cool. I don't know if it's a fix-all per se, but I've had it installed for over a month now and I haven't had any problems so far. One of the best improvements that I've made to this printer isn't really a mod as much as a change to the G-code. Angus over at Maker's Muse made a video about editing the start G-code on the Wanhao i3 to work similar to how the Prusa i3 starts a print. I'll include a link to his video in the description, but it basically prints a starting line at the front of the bed to wipe the nozzle off before it starts printing. I know this works in Simplify 3D, and I've heard of other people having success with it in Cura, so if you're looking for a good way to stop dragging filament into your first layer, I would highly recommend adding this to your start G-code. While I was trying to work out some further Z-wobble that was still occurring in my outer layers, I ended up ordering some toothed idler pulleys to replace the smooth idler pulleys that came stock on this printer. If you look closely at the way the belt rests on a smooth pulley, each tooth of the belt has the potential to slip or skip in very small increments when the pulley is turning. It would be a very small amount, but any unnecessary skipping could cause problems. I don't know if this has made a massive difference in print quality, but every little bit helps. Recently I changed my Y-axis bearings to the 2 to 1 configuration to match the way the Prusa i3's bearings are on the bed. It might seem logical to think of more bearings as better, but if you think of where your bearings are riding on the smooth rods as points on a flat plane, it might make a little bit more sense. If you took any math in school that required you to draw points in 3 dimensional space, you'll know that 3 points will always live on the same plane. That means if you move one of the points in any direction, you're still going to end up with a single plane that all three points live on. However, with four points, if you move one point up the slightest bit, then your points are going to be out of whack and they won't live on the same plane anymore. That means if any of your four bearings are slightly out of alignment, it's going to create resistance by pressing against the bearing rod. But three bearings pointing in the same direction should always leave your bed smoothly aligned. As part of installing the E3D V6 hot end, I had to change the firmware on my printer. The E3D V6 comes with a different thermistor than the one that's installed on the Maker Select V2, so the firmware reads the values differently. That means without updating the firmware, I couldn't trust what temperature the control box said the hot end was. Updating the firmware came with a lot of small headaches, and I plan on possibly making a video explaining how to update your firmware, so if you're interested in that, let me know. But changing to a custom version of Repetier, I think that's how you pronounce it, did come with some perks. I was able to remove the beeps and clicks that happen when using the control box directly. Also the version of the firmware I used added baby stepping. What is baby stepping? There's probably a lot of good videos about this topic out there, but basically it lets you move the z-axis in very small fractions of amounts. So if your first layer is running and you notice that the hot end is too far from the bed or too close to the bed, you can manually adjust the z-axis in small enough amounts to make a difference. And the last upgrade I'll mention in this video is X, Y, Z, and E calibration. I highly recommend performing this at some point if you have the means. Basically, your printer is configured to use a specific number of steps in each motor to cause each axis to move a certain distance. That means your printer's firmware has a setting that says, turn the extruder motor X number of steps to extrude 100 millimeters of filament. But without calibration, your printer may think it's pushing 100 millimeters of filament when it's really pushing 110 millimeters of filament. This is a bit of an extreme case, but it's not impossible. That can cause over-extrusion or under-extrusion that doesn't match your G-code settings, and this applies to your X, Y, and Z axis as well. The better calibrated your printer is, the more accurate your printer is going to be. And in my opinion, after you get any wobble and ringing artifacts under control, that's one of the most important things about a 3D printer is how accurate it is. Anyway, I know this is kind of a long video, so thanks for sticking around if you made it to the end. I'll try to add links to most of the mods I mentioned in the description below, and I highly recommend checking out Thomas Sunlotterer and Maker's Muse YouTube channels, as they've been a huge source of information and inspiration while I've been learning about 3D printing. 
Let me know if you want to see any other videos specifically. I work a very full-time job and most of my free time is spent either printing or 3D modeling stuff, but I'm always happy to contribute to the community if there's anything else you guys want to see. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.